Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this important hearing, and thank you both for the work that you're doing and your decades of uh, service, Mr. Rosenbaum. I am um, just kind of putting some numbers to the, uh, the pictures here. I think the UN has estimated that some 6,000 civilians have been killed since the invasion of Ukraine in, on uh, February the 24th. 400 of them were children. 9,000 have been injured, almost 700 of them children. And the UN also says that they believe that these numbers are probably uh, low. Um, I share a sentiment with uh, Senator Blackburn on crimes against humanity and, and holding China accountable. Uh, I share Senator Cornyn's concerns with maybe some people crossing the border illegally. They may actually be leaving before they can get caught. But what I really am concerned about is swift action on the, uh, on the part of Congress. Mr. Rosenbaum, you mentioned uh, how filling the gaps could uh, help us prosecute cases. Mr. Watson, um, in response to uh, Senator Durbin's question about the 1,700 leads, I'm kind of curious for uh, cases that we're pursuing here, what is our conviction right now? Once, once you finally bring a case, uh, how successful are we with prosecuting these cases based on the tools you have right now? Um, Senator, thank you for your question. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to report that due to the effort of our special agents in coordination with assistant U.S. attorneys as well as our principal legal advisors, we are relatively successful in presenting and achieving convictions on immigration as well as national, nationalization fraud um, to include perjury and false statements. So it's due in part to the resilience and subject matter expertise of our special agents and support staff that we achieve these results successfully. So I can't give you a specific number in terms of a percentage, but as captured in my written testimony, uh, we have several examples where our special agents went above and beyond in achieving successful conviction, sir. Mr. Rosenbaum, uh, when you alluded to filling gaps uh, to help uh, proceed with uh, particularly war, war crimes cases, um, are there legislative proposals that fit that mold now that we should be moving quickly on, or do we need more feedback from you on how to exactly tune it to make your job easier and to bring more people to justice? Thank you for that offer, Senator. Uh, we would indeed uh, be eager uh, to work with, with the Congress on um, uh, legislation. Uh, we certainly uh, endorse the idea of, of uh, providing present in jurisdiction over war criminals who, who come here. And the, if, if one of the lessons of the, um, uh, the, the post-World War II era is, um, in part because the United States is the most generous country in the world, uh, in accepting uh, immigrants. I, I wouldn't be alive but for that. Um, uh, they will manage to, some of them will manage to sneak in uh, along with the majority of, of uh, fine, of upstanding immigrants. Um, uh, we are also uh, interested in uh, Title, uh, Title VIII remedies, and I know um, uh, the ranking member and, and others have been exploring that through legislation. Uh, we still do not have uh, a, 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 an immigration bar uh, for participants in persecution or for war criminals. I mean, literally, um, there is no Title 18 uh, inadmissibility provision for war criminals or persecutors or for some other category of, of uh, other categories of participants in grave crimes. Uh, Mr. Ch <coughs> uh, chairman stepped out, but uh, for the chairman and ranking member, I have the privilege of being the co-lead for the Senate NATO Observer Group, and I'm following Ukraine very closely. I think that uh, Chair Durbin mentioned that this is an important moment. I think it is, and we have to think about it strategically. Uh, you've seen Putin call up 300,000 additional troops who do not want to serve. Russian people are beginning to understand the atrocities that are occurring in Ukraine. Uh, the Kremlin has recently passed laws that are a 10-year sentence for refusing to be a con basically a conscientious, a conscientious objector to the war, 10-year sentence, and a 15-year sentence if you don't obey orders on the battlefield. There is nothing more important in terms of our strategic posture going into the winter than sending a very clear message that these are war crimes and that we're going to provide every device available to prosecute anyone that we can. 
we, get a, we have to have our NATO allies join that because I will tell you it will have a major strategic effect on the battlefield. That requires Congress to act now. This is not a discussion we should be having six months from now about how we fine tune it. Before this Congress ends, we should have a markup in this committee, we should fill the gaps, and we should send a very clear message to anyone that Putin is calling up to continue these atrocities that they're gonna be held accountable. That will save lives in Ukraine, and it's needed before we finish this Congress. Thank you. We completely agree at the Department of Justice that this is an urgent matter, Senator. Thank you. I want to thank Senator Tillis. I agree.